Okay, so that was a long slide, but let me talk about special relativity and uh, I hope I still have your attention. Okay, so what we've done during the pandemic lockdown, I've managed to derive the main findings of Einstein's special theory of relativity from the behavior of the fluidic ether. So special relativity states the, the speed of light as a, um, as a postulate. It is a given, it's one of the hypothetical assumptions you, you have to make. V theory explains C as the maximum speed at which anything can propagate through the ether. So a photon traveling through the ether will travel at C whether the ether is flowing uh, and the pressure is reduced the critical velocity at which the ether tears will also be reduced and that means that the clock of particles would drop. So he, here's the math that explains how pressure, how the critical velocity um, changes with pressure. So the STEM students over here, you recognize this um, term here under the square root as the gamma value from special relativity. There was a guy sitting a couple of seats next to um, Einstein, his name was Lorenz. I think he was actually sitting next to him. And he came up with this um, formulation of how time dilates, how length um, contracts, how mass expands. It's called the Lorentzian transform. <coughs> okay, let, let's, let's just look at it. It's the square root of one minus u squared over c squared. U squared is the, in V theory terms, is the speed of the ether. And so imagine if u squared was, um, if u squared was zero, then that would just, that term under the uh, equation would be uh, uh, one. And so the result would simply be c. And that, that term under the square root is given by 1 over gamma in this formulation. When you apply the consideration of how pressure causes the critical speed to change, you end up with the same time dilation factor that special relativity expresses. And so um, when we also apply that to Newton's second law, we come up with the same um, notion that mass will appear to increase as the local ethereal pressure drops. How does that explain intuitively? So if a particle would end up in a low pressure region, it's almost like it's in a rut, it would require more force in order to accelerate it out of this low pressure region. And so particles tend to appear to gain mass as they go through this low pressure region. It's a tough concept, but I'm, I was encouraged when, when the math started to uh, materialize.